Win or lose, Dennis Byrd did everything with passion, recording 28 sacks in four years with the Jets. Back to pass in his own end zone. George being rushed hard. He's dropped for a safety. In 1992, a collision with a teammate fractured Byrd's vertebra and left him unable to walk. The emotion he put into the game came pouring back to him. And through physical therapy, he was walking again in a matter of months. I'd like to start off by saying that uh, I'm very glad, very proud to be standing before you here today. And quite frankly, I'm glad to be standing anywhere today. <laughs> and uh, obviously, that was written down. <laughs> Four years ago, I came to New York a young Christian man. And now I go home a young Christian man in a New York jet. And I'm very proud to say that I'm a New York jet. And I will be forever. So it's not goodbye, but I'll be back. Thank you. Bird's final season was teammate Kerry Blanchard's first. But the kicker's best days came as a Colt. His game-winning kicks helped get Indianapolis to the AFC title game in 1995. It is good! The Colts win! Yeah! The Colts win on Blanchard's field goal! That team was led by Ted Marchabroda, who coached the Colts in the 90s and the 70s. Marchabroda was also the first head coach of the Ravens, making him the only man to helm both Baltimore teams. Clarence Brooks coached the defensive line in Baltimore for over a decade. His predecessor in that job was Rex Ryan, whose father Buddy built the most punishing defense of all time. The Bears' 46 defense reflected Buddy Ryan's brash personality. In 18 years, I've defensed every damn good offense in the National Football League, so I think I'm qualified to know more about it than most offensive coordinators. Oh, oh, I would have said something to Buddy, but he wouldn't stand on the field long enough. He put his big fat rear end into the dressing room. I resent that. I've been on a diet. I lost a couple of pounds, and I thought I was looking good. And he, and he goes and uh, calls me fat. I kind of resent that a little bit. Other coaches clashed with Buddy, but his players came to love him. We got a ball for you. His locker rooms became families, and his family followed him into football. Oh, yeah, that's a good hug. Give it a try. You gotta blow hard. You gotta... There you go. That's a girl. Stay onside. Bruce DeHaven was one of the league's best special teams coaches. But in a three-decade career, there are bound to be some dark days. With the Bills, he was on the wrong side of the Music City miracle. In bad breaks, DeHaven always found the good. He and his wife, Kathy, named their adopted son, Toby Scott DeHaven. Scott Norwood meant a great deal to me. The missed field goal in the Super Bowl, I thought handled that whole situation with as much grace as possible. I just thought I would like Toby to be a part of that. Drag up that diesel. Oh, the voice of Redskins superfan Chief Z was unmistakable. While Hokey Guy Jean, the Cajun cannonball, moved to the broadcast booth and gave his voice to New Orleans' finest hour. The Saints have proven that they are the best team in the National Football League for the year 2009. Will Smith helped bring the Lombardi to Bourbon Street and patrolled the Superdome for a decade. Another defensive end, Gary Jeter, never got that payoff. A first round pick out of USC, he toiled for the Giants before their 80s heyday. Fellow Trojan Joe McKnight followed him to New York and made the longest play in Jets history. Chased 107 yards. 
Dennis Green helped make a different kind of history. He was part of the NFL's first wave of black head coaches, and he got there by practicing what he preached. I'll tell you something, man, you never quit. You never quit. You never quit. The head coach has to get everybody to march to the same beat. And now we gotta go set this tempo. Green drummed out winners to the tune of eight playoff appearances in 13 seasons. will miss Jets punter Curly Johnson, who passed away one day after his 61st wedding anniversary. And teammate Winston Hill, who stood more like a mountain protecting Joe Namath's blindside. We'll miss Al Wistard, who was no mountain, yet looms large in Eagles history. I was the smallest tackle in the league. Uh, what size? 215. <laughs> we'll miss another eagle, Kevin Turner. His fight with ALS turned him into a force for awareness of the disease and brain injuries in sports. We'll miss the 1961 AFL Rookie of the Year, Earl Faison, who anchored the Chargers championship defense. And Bill Stanfill the four-time Pro Bowler who helped ensure the Dolphins' no-name defense would instead have two titles. We thank Bob Gain. He sacrificed part of his career to serve in Korea and still made five Pro Bowls after coming home. We'll miss all who we lost in 2016. But as long as we remember them, they're never really gone.